In this video, we're going to figure out how fast a person can accelerate their body in the upward direction by jumping. And to do so, we're going to use a very simple device to measure their acceleration, and that's going to be a bathroom scale. Now, a textbook would normally phrase this question as such. A person standing on a bathroom scale measures their weight to be 800 newtons when they are standing motionless. The person then crouches down and then jumps straight up. An observer standing beside the scale notices as the jumper's feet leaves the scale, the scale reads a value of 900 newtons. And the question is, what is the person's acceleration? And we're going to assume that the acceleration is constant. So here's what's happening. When this person is standing here motionless, their weight, their gravitational weight, is going to be 800 newtons. And then what happens is a force needs to act on this person, a net force, causing them to accelerate in the upward direction. So they're going to accelerate in the same direction that the force is acting. That's what Newton's second law says. It says forces cause objects to accelerate in the direction of the net external force. And when this force acts on this person, their weight, their apparent weight, that is, is going to increase. It's going to appear that they weigh 900 newtons because they have to press down on the scale. And in response, the scale has to press back up on the person. And using this information, their gravitational weight and their apparent weight as their feet leave the scale, we're going to try to figure out what the acceleration of this person is. To solve this problem, we're going to start by using Newton's second law of motion, which says that if you add up the forces acting on a person, it's going to equal the mass of the person times the acceleration of the person. Now don't forget, Newton's second law is a vector equation indicating that you have to take into account both the magnitude of the force and the direction the force is acting. Now this mass times acceleration term right here, this represents the force required to change the velocity of the person This term right here does not represent how much force the person needs to apply to the ground in order to accelerate their body in the upward direction. The force the ground needs to apply to the person is called the normal force, and it's going to be the magnitude of the normal force pushing on this person that's going to help propel them into the upward direction. It's important to note that this MA term does not represent how much force the person has to apply to the ground in order to push themselves into the upward direction. And we'll explore that idea a little bit later in this video. Now before we go any further, we're going to need to know what the mass of this person is so that we can figure out how much force is required to accelerate their body in the upward direction. And to do that, we're going to use the relationship that we derived in a previous video that said that weight equals the mass of an object times the gravitational acceleration here on Earth. Now we're given the weight of this person, we're told the person's weight is 800 newtons, and we know the gravitational acceleration here on Earth, which is 9.8 meters per second per second. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides of this equation by g, what you do to one side of an equation you do to the other, and you should notice that this gravitational acceleration term cancels out with this gravitational acceleration term, and then you get out a relationship that says that the mass of this person is going to equal their weight divided by the gravitational acceleration here on Earth. Now the problem states that their gravitational weight is 800 newtons, and we're going to divide that by 9.8 meters per second squared, and when you divide 800 newtons by 9.8 meters per second, you get 81.6 kilograms. Remember, a newton divided by a meter per second squared is a unit of a kilogram, and in this case, their mass is going to be 81.6 kilograms. Now that we know the mass of this person, we can apply Newton's second law to figure out the forces acting on this person. And in this case, so in this case, the forces acting on this person are only acting in the up and down direction, that is, only in the y direction. And I want to break this down into two distinct cases to talk about the normal force acting on this person. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a free body diagram to represent the forces acting on this person. If this is the object on which the forces are acting, this person is standing here on Earth and they have weight in the downward direction, there's going to be a normal force pushing them in the upward direction. And for this first case, let's just consider this the case of the person standing motionless on the scale. In that case, their acceleration is going to be zero meters per second squared. They're not going to be accelerated when they're in the crouched position, not moving. And so what I'd like to do is, let's just take a look at what Newton's second law of motion tells us for an object that is standing there motionless. And in this case, what it says is, when you add up the forces acting on this person, it's going to equal the mass of the person times the acceleration of the person. Now in this case, their acceleration is zero. So what happens is, when you add up the forces acting on this person, it's going to add up to be zero. Now there are two forces acting on this person. There's the normal force acting in the upward direction, so the normal force is going to be pushing this person in the upward direction. The normal force is due to the ground pushing up on this person. And then I'm going to subtract off the weight force, because that's the 
force acting in the downward direction. And in this case, these two forces are going to add up to be zero, again, when this person is standing there motionless on the scale. And what I'd like to know, when this person is standing motionless on the scale, how much does the ground have to push up on this person? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the weight force to both sides of this equation. What you do to one side of an equation, you do to the other. And in this case, the normal force equals minus w plus w is zero. So that will equal zero plus w, which is equal to the weight force. So in this one special case, when this person is not accelerating, the normal force, the magnitude of the force of the ground pushing up on this person, is going to equal the weight force. Now let's take a look at what happens when this person pushes themselves off the ground. So let's draw a free body diagram to represent that. Again, this person is going to have weight in the downward direction. The magnitude of their gravitational weight does not change. And then there's also going to be a normal force pushing up on them. The ground still has to push them in the upward direction. But in this case, they're going to be accelerating in the upward direction. So there has to be a net force acting on this person, causing them to change their velocity. Again, notice that the force and the acceleration vectors point in the same direction, because Newton's second law is telling you that forces cause objects to accelerate in the direction of the net external force. So when we apply Newton's second law to this case, that is when we add up the forces acting on this person, it's going to equal the mass of the person times the acceleration of the person, the acceleration which we don't know yet. But we do know that there are two forces acting on this person. There's the normal force pushing this person in the upward direction, and then there's the weight force pulling this person in the downward direction. And they're going to add up to be the mass of the person times how fast they change their velocity. So in this case, when I add up the forces, there's going to be the normal force pushing them in the upward direction, and then there's going to be the weight force pulling them in the downward direction, and that's going to equal the mass of the person times the acceleration of this person. Now if you remember back to the beginning of this video, this ma term, this mass times acceleration term, represents the force required to cause this person to change their velocity. And that's what this term equals as well. This term right here represents how much force is required to change the velocity of this person. Now in this case, we know what the normal force is. The normal force is what the scale reads when their feet leave the ground. And in this case, the normal force acting on this person when their feet were leaving the scale was 900 newtons. And then they, we know what their weight is. Their weight is exactly 800 newtons, and that force is acting in the downward direction. And that's going to add up to be the mass of this person, which we said was 81.6 kilograms, times the acceleration of this person, which we do not know yet. Now we can simplify this right now. 900 newtons minus 800 newtons is 100 newtons, and that's going to equal the mass of this person, which we said was 81.6 kilograms, times their acceleration. Now if this force, which is 900 newtons, represents how much force the ground has to push up on this person, this 100 newton of force represents how much force is required to cause this person with a mass of 81.6 kilograms to accelerate. That is, a net force of 100 newtons is going to cause this person to accelerate. So to find the acceleration of this person, we're going to divide both sides of this equation by 81.6 kilograms. We're going to divide it by their mass. So 81.6 kilograms, and what you should see is this 81.6 kilograms cancels out with this 81.6 kilograms, and we'll find that the acceleration of this person equals 1.23 meters per second squared. Remember, a newton divided by a kilogram works out to be a meter per second squared. Another way to think about this, if we rewrite this equation as 100 newtons equals 81.6 kilograms times 1.23 meters per second squared, one way to think about this is a 100 newton force is required to cause an object with a mass, or in this case a person with a mass of 81.6 kilograms, to accelerate at a rate of 1.23 meters per second per second. So this is how fast their velocity changes.